thanks. Yes. Hey guys, good morning. Um, so nice uh, to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, we are Studio Malls, of course. And today we are going to show you our work, um, some behind the scenes, some cool projects. Uh, there's still a lot more to see, but um, we can only uh, talk for like 20 minutes. Um, I hope you all have a coffee and something to eat. Um, this is us, this is Studio Mouse. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm on the right. And I'm Silas. <laughs> Yes, that's me, um, and I'm uh, oh, at Studio Miles. I'm really picky at all those really tiny details, uh, and I really like a challenge. So when it's yeah, the more difficult, I'm a really happy man. And in the middle, there's Lotte. She is the best photographer we know. <laughs> She's also really good at Photoshop, and she can really kick your ass at Mario Kart. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and, <true. she's> <laughs> and she's over there. <laughs> And uh, there's also Romy, she is uh, our fantastic intern, and together we are uh, a pretty great team. Um, and this is, uh, these are some examples of our work. Uh, it's very crisp, it's very colorful, and very detailed. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, we'll do with it. Um, the stuff we make is, is handmade, and um, we like to use physical objects because it's more real. And as a viewer, you feel that it's actually handmade. Um, and we like that feel. But we do our best to make it ev everything perfectly smooth and almost like a 3D render, uh, but not exactly. Um, we also like dick jokes and uh, other crazy stuff. Um, and I don't know if you can see this one. This is a. Uh, <laughs> A perfect loop with super bright green colors and blue shadings. <laughs> um, we just like to be very picky and very specific on our coloring. Um, and it's just nice to like go crazy on all those details. Um, it's just something we love. We love to get into details like pretty fucking far to make it actually super perfect. Uh, this is something Silas really loves. Mm -hmm. I'm more of the big build stuff and more of the uh, the general things. Uh, I'm not really have the patience to uh, go into detail all that much, um, but that's where Silas come in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's what we do. Um, and today we are going to talk about the subject of now. So now what? Well, we discussed what we could tell you about the team now, and first. Um, it would be a great opportunity to talk about what's going on in the world right now. World issues, uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, school shootings, why not? Um, but we didn't want to go there. We just want to start the day lightly with some cool uh, stories and fun pictures. Um, so if that's okay with you, we'll start. Oh, I can't read this at all. Um, this is our calendar. This is the month of May, the last month. And this is what we are going to talk about. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, here and here and here and here. Some arrows. <laughs> That's what the stuff we are going to talk about. Not this. This is my holiday. Uh, or the personal training I do on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Or my Papa Dog, which is also so somewhere in there. <laughs> um, what we are going to talk about first uh, the campaign we did for the WWF. Um, it's a campaign to save the tiger. And um, it started actually as a personal project, which was called Stuffed Animals. And a stuffed animal is a toy in the shape of an animal made of cloth and filled with a soft substance. Uh, we all have them as a kid, I'm sure. And we just thought it would be funny to stuff it in a glass jar. Um, this makes it very cute, but also kind of sad. And we made a complete series. We had a parrot and a peacock and a giraffe with a broken neck and also a snake. This is one of my favorites. You can see his little tongue there slithering. Um, and a mouse 
and a super sad panda. And we thought it would be funny if this uh, series all together is it's looking great, it's very bright, very colorful and very fun. Um, and we were thinking about uh, what to do with it once it, once it was done. Uh, we could just put it on Instagram and send it into the world and then everybody could like enjoy it, but maybe we should, hey, um, maybe, maybe we could make more of it and then um, like collaborate with a brand or sell it to a brand to make it more of a project. Um, so we reached out to uh, WWF and started talking about doing a campaign together. Um, and that became uh, this key visual, actually. Um, it's a tiger, and the WWF um, <clears throat> asked us to do a campaign for the tiger because it's the Chinese year of the tiger, and there are, are only a few thousand tigers left in the wild. Um, and due to poaching and killing and deforestation, there are um, they need space, they need space to live, uh, which lined up perfectly with an image of a tiger in a tiny jar. So this was perfect and, and we started making the campaign. Um, and it holds a, a film and uh, some key visuals and some short clips, which I'm going to show you now. It's in Dutch. Er zijn nog maar een paar duizend tijgers in het beeld. Ze worden gedood en gestrooid. In een leefgebied wordt het kleiner en kleiner. Jij kunt helpen. Geef de tijger de ruimte voor donateur. Um, and it's of course it's a sad story because the tiger wants to get freed. So we made some clips and then showing the tiger is in desperate need of space. And then um, as you donate your money, you can save a tiger and you can actually get one out. That's cute, right? Um, so how did we do this? Well, first we went to Ikea and bought 100 glass jars that we had to fill with 100 tigers, uh, which was very fun, but also took forever. Um, and then we put them on set, making sure like the real sad ones uh, are properly centered. And then the super sad one is actually in the middle, focused, uh, combined with an, an angry one and a kind of surprised one because they all think, what the fuck am I doing in this jar? Um, and the complete campaign was really successful. It's, it's kind of sad to see, but also really gets donors to like donate their money because they actually feel for the tiger. Um, and here's some behind the scenes. It's low on battery. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> then we have uh, a one week further, and there was a uh, there was a chat with Truebill. It's an American client of ours, and uh, a couple of years ago, I think two years, uh, we did a project with them, and um, we made uh, two commercials. Uh, they really liked them, and now they were asking if we could do another round. Um, so. A little bit about Truebill. It's an American mobile uh, app, and it helps you um, manage your finances. You can uh, get an overview of your spendings, your savings, and you can even uh, cancel subscriptions. Um, and uh, yeah, they have a really nice app, and uh, yeah, we made two commercials for them uh, to explain how the app works and um, uh, how you can work with it. 
And first I'm gonna show you the first one. Managing your money can be hard, but what if there was a secret financial control center that helped you organize your spending, manage unwanted subscriptions, and lower your bills? Download Truebill, your all-in-one finance app. And the next one. 84% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Truebill helps you save money by finding recurring charges, notifying you when they're due, and easily canceling unwanted subscriptions. Download Truebill and take control of your money. And um, this was a very cool project for us to do. Uh, of course, it's super fun to make all these like machine uh, parts. Um, but it's also uh, necessary when you have to like tell the story of an app. It's a digital process, it's digital actions. Ah. Mm. When you have to make that visible, you have to like come up with a translation to make these uh, actions go. So we um, came up with a secret control center where all these movements and all these like different parts of the machine do the job you can do in the app. Uh, you can sort your uh, bills, you can spend or save, um, and you can lower your bills. And all these uh, machine parts are, are very fun to design, uh, but also complicated to make. And that's what we really love, to go into detail to make them look uh, perfectly fine. Like all the different knobs, the tiny nails, the lighting, the vintage logos, everything has to be perfect. Um, and that's what we'll show you. Oh, this is your part. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, this is. Um, I'm going to tell you something about the behind the scenes because um, yeah, we really love all these tiny machines, and yeah, we had to find a way to uh, to build them. So we uh, drew all the basic parts um, on on a computer in uh, Illustrator, yes. and then uh, we laser cut them. Um, after that, we glued everything together, and for some uh, mechanical parts, we used other uh, yeah, other machines. So I bought uh, a flip clock online, and I took it apart, and then I made sure all the screws were back in there, and we could uh, <laughs> we could operate it ourselves uh, to perfect time it uh, when we needed it on set. And um, when placed on set, you can see. There's a knob over here, it doesn't work. Uh, actually, this whole machine doesn't work anymore. Um, and there's a bill over here, and there's a super tiny wire, uh, because we needed to pull this bill out uh, by hand. You'll see it later in, uh, in the behind the scenes. Um, and on set, it looks like this. And at the right moment, when you get a notification that you have to pay your bill, then the bill pops up, and you, uh, uh, you can pay it. Um, then this sorting machine, um, it's actually a pretty, it, it looks pretty big and huge, but it's actually just a wall uh, with a slider in front of it, um, where we put some trays on, and I was standing behind this wall, throwing all these bills through the small slit uh, and making sure it would fall into the tray. We had to do this like a thousand times, <laughs> and it was so difficult, and in the end, um, yeah, just uh, throwing all uh, these papers in there didn't work as smooth as we, th as we thought. So I had to blow all these papers through it. <laughs> it was so much work. Um, but the best part of this shot was actually the small uh, rotating beacon. You can see over there. And look at my super happy face. <laughs> super He's happy, a happy face. man. <laughs> yeah, I found it online and it was like 50 bucks <laughs> and it's super tiny. But it really made my day, or actually it made my whole week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> because I really love all this, uh, all this tiny stuff. Oh. Um, yeah, this is fine. Uh, Silas, as he said, he's, he's really uh, the, he, he loves to go to into detail. Sorry. Um, but that's not me. I like to build the bigger stuff. So when it's in the workshop um, and we need to be and we need to have big props or big sets. That's my job. Um, so I made this big panel with uh, 25 lights uh, that we laser cut the holes out of, but then had to uh, fit perfectly together. Um, we installed 25 lights, made the trim, made the switches, and then um, hooked it up to electricity. Uh, this all works, this is all actually real. 
we like to do things real, so um, this has to work on set perfectly. Um, and then the hand model comes in, shoots like 10 minutes of film with switches, and then it's gone. So it's like a week of work in a couple of minutes, and then in the in the film it's only like a couple of seconds, uh, but it's real and it it looks real and it feels real. So that's what that's what we're aiming for. Um, yeah, and there's the behind the scenes again. As you can see, a lot of people are working on such a, such a film, not just us, uh, but an entire team of also uh, DOPs, uh, sound designers, post-production uh, post company. Um, but right now, this is last week and this week, um, we're working on uh, more of a personal project. Uh, it's really my cup of tea because this is all about tiny details and super complex stuff. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm... I, I'm right in the middle of it, so it's a bit rusty and all, everything I'm going to tell about, but I'm going to show you what it's like. Um, it's called Elytron. It's uh, the name of the shield of a beetle. Um, but before I'm going to talk a lot about beetles, um, I'm first going to talk about how it all started. Because last year uh, I bought some, sto uh, some uh, motion control gear online. Um, you can use it. It's, uh, yeah, it consists of a, of a slider, a rotator, and uh, some switches, and you can all control them um, with your phone or with your computer. And uh, with those uh, stuff, you can make super nice camera movements, do some crazy transitions, do some epic other stuff. Um, and as I said earlier, I really like to dive into stuff. So I managed to uh, break the software in about an hour. <laughs> And I damaged it, so I had to contact the, the support desk uh, to help me out with fix, fixing it. Uh, but then, a couple of weeks later, um, I got an email. And uh, it was from Zina. Uh, she was working at that company, and uh, she saw our work. And then she was asking, hey, maybe we can do a collaboration. So it was actually quite a nice thing that I broke the software. Um, <laughs> And she was asking for a col collaboration, and then they said, also, we can upgrade your kit. Um, we had a talk about it, and then they said, you can do anything you want as long as you use our product. Um, so make something awesome, and then we're good to go. And this sounded like the perfect opportunity to, do, to actually do something with this uh, gear, which has been laying around in the studio, and I hadn't found time to play with it or make a project with it, so I thought, well, let's make something super complex and do a stop motion with a beetle. Um, no, actually, a walking uh, sequence is already super difficult with, with a human figure because it has two arms and two legs. This one has uh, six legs, two shields, and two wings, which is super complex. <laughs> and then, to make it even more crazy, I drew this storyboard. Um, which is about a beetle, uh, he's chilling in his, in his own uh, habitat and then um, there is an empty soda can thrown at him, he jumps up, kicks it out of the frame and lands in a super nice superhero pose uh, back on its tree. Um, 
sounds like fun. <laughs> I didn't know what I got into. But um, yeah, last week we, we started shooting. But first, I'm going to show you um, these images because I bought these preserved beetles uh, online. Um, and as you would as expect, they're super fragile. Uh, the tiniest movement will break everything. So you actually should store them in a jar or in a nice frame. Um, so I decided to build my own. It looked like this. This was my first prototype. Um, this was yeah. This was the base because I thought, well, I have to m uh, make sure every body part can move. So I made uh, yeah the the legs out of aluminium wire. Uh, every part um, is uh, mounted with a magnet, so I could rotate the head uh, and the body uh, apart from itself. And then, of course, I added a lot of clay, um, also uh, transparent sheets for the wings, um, and even some metal for the, for the shields to make sure they were really polished and really smooth. Um, I added some paint to it, and here you can see how detailed it is, and over there you can see me just playing around with a lot of clay. And it, it was really about all the tiny details because there were even some there are even some hairs on its face. <laughs> you can't see it right now, but it is there. Um, you can probably see it in the future when we post this uh, online on our Instagram. Um, and you can also see me painting over here. I did it in I did it this weekend because I spent too much time playing around with the clay. Um, and I found a super nice piece of wood, um, and. Um, we added some ferns to it, uh, so they were actually fake, and some other plants. And then we placed everything on set, and with some nice pink and blue lightning, we created this super futuristic kind of uh, environment. And here you can see this little fellow ready for action. And I have a small clip of us building the set and um, operating the camera and uh, moving everything around. And it looks like this. And at first, the light was a little bit too futuristic, so we toned it down a bit. And here you can see the camera moving up and down because we wanted those crazy movements, and we had to use those gear. <laughs> and right now, I'm going to show you the first part of the video. It's actually just the first scene, because this is how far we got in the last few days. Um, it's all, yeah, the rigs are still in there, uh, the, there's no color grading, there's no sound, there's just some images, but yeah, this is where we're at right now, and this is what I talk about this, so here you go. I hope you can see it. <laughs> so there's still a lot of work to do. But this is how far we got. Um, oh. Oh. And, this is and then we are at the end. This is now. This is today. Um, you guys were amazing. Thank you for being here. And please, let's be friends. Find us on Instagram and uh, get more of all this. Thank you. <laughs>